Kim. There we go. Kim, how are you doing? Good. How are you going, mate? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining the stream. My pleasure. I was I was already online five hours ago because I messed it up at the time. <laughs> and I was live and I was like, Kim, where are you? Where are you? <laughs> it's all my fault. Never mind, Ken, thank you so much uh, for, for joining uh, Between Two Wheels, where we talk about motorcycles and filmmaking. And uh, if we already sang motorcycles and filmmaking, there is nobody, nobody else than you who should be on the series. <laughs> because you're the founder of uh, Stories of Bikes with almost like 100,000 followers on YouTube. You're close to, to reach, uh, reach it. So I'm very excited to have you on, uh, on this episode today. So, Thanks for having me. Thank you. Cam, um, tell us, how did you get into filmmaking? Um, it, it happened uh, through kind of a series of unfortunate events. Um, it was kind of a, a combination of, um, I was so doing some freelancing in advertising and marketing, and um, I would sort of just had my third, uh, third no, second child. And... Um, and it was, uh, I've been doing some freelancing with uh, one one of my clients for about sort of two or three years and sort of working there at the office for um, uh, probably two or three days a week. So they're basically my, my ongoing kind of income. And then um, they, you know, unceremoniously sort of decided they didn't need me and, and uh, sort of inform me in, in this sort of whole sort of open office and um, it was very embarrassing and it was probably the sort of the, the angriest I've ever been in my life. And then um, around the sort of same time, I'd sort of seen uh, this video by Henry Canton of uh, Shinya Kimura of uh, Shabbat Engineering. And it was just, it's like an amazing sort of two to three minute short video that it just completely blew my mind. And um, there's sort of, you know, those two kind of events at the same time um, were just like, you know, I need to get, kind of get some control in my life. And I just started sort of doing some sort of family videos at the same time and really sort of discovered this sort of love of making videos and editing and shooting and sort of, you know, getting the hang of the whole technical aspect and, and then, um, sort of, again, at sort of the same time, um, my uh, my mum, who'd sort of worked all her life, you know, she was a single mum, raised my brother and I uh, pretty much on her own and um, had sort of just worked her whole life. And then, you know, in the last few years, she decided to do a, a fine arts degree, which she'd sort of talked about her, uh, her whole life and... Um, and so just completed that and then got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and was oh. given like six months to live. And, and it was just kind of like, you know, I, I kind of want to do this stuff. And it was a real kind of wake up call to say, you know, don't wait until the end to kind of you know, do it now. So um, it was just, it just really lit this fire inside me to kind of, you know, just put everything aside and, and, and um start making videos and you know i was i've been motorcycling for uh for about 15 years at that time um i loved the the shinya kimura video and i'm I, it just sort of was a, a great sort of starting point to say well yeah here's something that i love here's something that i love doing and um you know put the two together and um i sort of started uh, I had no idea what I was going to do, but I sort of had an idea for a video and, and got a friend of mine who had the same bike as me because I had no no idea to kind of uh, how I was going to do the sound hmm. and uh, made made the first episode of Stories of Bike, which was Tunnels, which was mostly sort of semi-autobiographical. <laughs> and then, um, um, yeah, and so I... I, I Ended up doing a couple of videos after that. I still didn't know what I was going to call it, uh, but ended up calling it um, Stories of Bike. And yeah, and, I, and then sort of 40, 40 or 50 videos later, still going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. It's a few years already. So yeah, for the audience who doesn't know, um, what can you explain what Stories of Bikes is? So Stories of Bike... Um, yeah, as, as I said, it so started out as uh, sort of just wanting to do a motorcycle video. Mm -hmm. um, 
and then um, trying to, you know, in some way at, at first trying to recreate the Shabbat engineering um, video that uh, that I really loved. But al along the way, I kind of discovered that um, the people that I was sort of interviewing and um, and making these videos about really had sort of interesting stories, and there were there were aspects of that story, their stories that kind of really stood out. And, um, and those stories kind of became uh, a way of exploring a theme. So stories of bike is, 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 <laughs> how do you, how do you explain it? It's a motorcycling video that kind of uses motorcycling to explore people's own uh, personal stories. Yeah. Whether it be simply you know what they get out of motorcycling, or something that's happened in their life, um, or um, yeah, just just kind of like that. Yeah. But um, yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. So your your videos, you there's a very personal touch, and uh, you're getting a lot of out of the people who you're doing the interviews with, they are very transparent and sharing intimate information with you. So how do you get the people so comfortable sharing all of this and just speaking naturally uh, and having this big camera next to them? How do you do that? Yeah, it, it it's, was a um, uh, an interesting process to to develop. And, and it was something that I kind of developed over the, the number of videos that I've done. At first, um, it was just kind of a, a couple of texts and say, you know, do you want to do a video? And they go, yeah. And then, then I sort of get there and go, oh, okay, I've, I've got to sort of find out a bit of a story. Uh, but then it's sort of really sort of um, uh, each story that I did would kind of develop. But where it really kind of took off was, I think, about the seventh video that I did. There was an episode of Stories of Bike called Romance. And um, there's a lovely couple called Chris Aaron who um, were in their, I think their late 50s, early 60s at the time. And um, Chris had sort of built this beautiful custom uh, Triumph Tiger. Uh, it was just like this beautiful silver bullet. And um, uh and Steve, who the, the the guy who recommended the story to me, who was in one of my previous episodes, he said, look, if you really want to do a story, do a story about Chris and Karen. They're amazing people. Uh, you didn't hear this from me, but um, Karen was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I thought, oh, that's that's probably a bit bit too heavy for me to do. I, I wasn't sure if, if um, I, I was ready to kind of handle something like that. Most of the stories I'd done before that were sort of fairly light and uh, easy going. Mm. And it wasn't until um, my mum had uh, been diagnosed with cancer herself that I kind of had some sort of frame of reference. Mm. So it was about that time that I kind of reached out to, to Chris and, and then sort of started talking. And we, we, we sort of just chatted on the phone. <clears throat> um, we, we spoke by our email. And, and this kind of went on for probably about um, three or four weeks before we actually met in person. Mm. And so by the time we actually met, um, there was a lot of comfort and ease already. And um, it was, was not kind of starting from scratch. You know, there was a lot of familiarity and, and they were ready to kind of share their story. They, they, they trusted me. Uh, mm. So it was really kind of a matter of building up that, rapport and sharing my own stories and feelings with them and, and them doing the same back that we're able to kind of build that level of trust. Mm -hmm. And so the process now was really, um, was really about, um, uh, this, you know, working to build that rapport as kind of the, the main objective of the shoot. Well, you know, whether or not I kind of, was able to get time to get all the shots that I need or, you know, all, all the other kind of background stuff. It's sort of about establishing that rapport way before I kind of um, turn up to start filming through conversations uh, on the phone or via email and, and knowing exactly what their story is uh, before I even sort of get there to start shooting. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, and then... <clears throat> You know, just call it kind of research and rapport building. 
and then yeah by the time i get there um i sort of know exactly what i need to shoot and then while we're shooting um over th three or four days um I'm, I'm still talking we're still building building that rapport and sharing stories and and then i should usually shoot the interview last mm -hmm. um so that by the time we get to that point there they've had the camera in front of their face for um three or four days and we sit down and usually i kind of sit behind the camera so the, the kind of camera's in front of my face like this mm -hmm. and then, um um they're sort of uh, sitting maybe uh, so three or four metres away in front of me. And then we, we just have a, a conversation um, mm -hmm. camera. And, um, and you know, I, I know, mm -hmm. usually know what they're going to say and and, um, and just kind of prompt, the, you know, just a f ask a few questions here and there to kind of get them to, to recount the story and, Mm -hmm. And also the benefit of <clears throat> of doing the interview last um, through the shoot process, I can kind of ask additional questions, and new things will will kind of come out as well. But yeah, that's 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 kind of the process. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, everyone is amazing. It's um, it's always such a um, a privilege to sort of go through that experience with them. Nice, nice. By the way, questions. So if the audience, if you guys have questions. Please leave them in the, the question poll. We pull them up uh, in a bit, and then we're going through your questions. So, um, Cam, you already said you uh, you have the camera in front of you, and I'm trying to put a, put a picture where we see the camera. Can you run us a little bit through the gear that you use? Because your your stuff is very cinematic, and it was already very cinematic like five, six years ago when you actually started to produce uh, the episodes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so over the series, I've I've used um, four different cameras. So the first, I think the first season, I'd used um, a, a Canon. The first camera I started with was a Canon five fifty D, and I had two lenses. I had a fifty mil and a thirty mil, and then I saved up uh, and bought. Um, the Canon uh, EFS 10 to 24 mil lens. And so for most of the videos, I just had those three lenses. I had the the uh, the 550D and then I bought a um, uh, just a suction cam uh, car mount mm -hmm. and, that, and, and a tripod. And that was, that was my gear. And also I was fortunate to learn early on that sound was super important that you can have the crappiest footage, <clears throat> but no one will care as long as you have good sound. So I, mm -hmm. I've uh, invested in a, a Sennheiser MKE 600 um, shotgun mic. Mm -hmm. and, um, so that was kind of my my kit and it was great. I could just chuck it all in, in one bag. I could drive around. It was super light. And then um, I think about... Um, I think it was about seven or eight videos in. My dad bought me uh, Canon 6D, which is great. The, you know, huge step up in image quality. Uh, I think I was, yeah, started using that around um, episode eight. Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, I, I bought uh, a GH4, which I used for a couple of videos. And then, but I bought that very late in the piece. And that was a, a great camera but it, yeah coming from the canon it took a lot of time to kind of get a handle on and then after that um the biggest step up was the gh5 the panasonic gh5 which was just an incredible camera uh it just it could do so much and um uh i used that for a whole heap of videos uh, i used it for I did this motorcycle safety series called Roads You Ride for the local government here, for the state government. And I shot the, the whole series, um, uh, nine videos of that on the GH5. And um, using not, not too much dip, uh, different equipment, um, but I had, um, I bought a, an Atomos um, recorder so I could basically feed the, the video output from the GH5 
into the Atomist recorder and get, um, instead of working with um, MOV files, I'd then get the, uh, I'd be able to work with ProRes files, which are much easier and nicer to, to work with on top of that. And then um, over the last nearly two years ago, I bought a, a Kinefinity Terra 4K cinema camera, mm. which is just incredible. It's really kind of lifted the, the quality of the work that I can do now. Yeah, that's the, uh, the one that we're seeing here, isn't it? Yes, that one. Yeah, by the way, these, these slides are great. How do you do that? <laughs> That's why I asked you that. Let me be the host so that I can put yeah. some stuff. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's all... Behind the pictures and the B roll, you know. All right. You have a few questions coming in. So uh, let me see. Let me pull them off. Um, uh, the first question is from S1000R posts. What challenges do you usually face when shooting? Running out of time, light? What are your challenges? Uh, the challenges are um, I've been really fortunate with light and weather. Uh, I'd say that probably only one or two of the videos I've ever shot has ever sort of locked out from rain. Um, and then uh, most of the time it's it's just working with sort of the day-to-day -day happenings of whoever it is that I'm shooting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the latest shoot um, <laughs> that I did, which I'm in the process of editing now, yeah. I was in Vegas, in Las Vegas in uh, February, shooting for Royal Enfield, mm -hmm. um, working with uh, Christian Sosa from Social Metalworks. And... Um, he was just having a real hard time uh, getting the bike to where he needed. And we'd been speaking about um, me coming over and I'd been checking in and, and the whole time he said, yep, yep, the, the bike will be ready, ready to go. And I get there and it's completely not ready. And he had to pretty much work um, the whole time I was there to just get the bike ready to run. Yeah. Um, well, then feel good were very insistent that they wanted to see the bike running. So I ended up having to stay a day earlier. So my whole shoot schedule was gone and I just had to kind of work around that. But um, but that's kind of fine because um, if you've done your planning um, and you know what you want to shoot, you can find ways to kind of just sort of shuffle that around and, and make things work. And, you know, one of the... The skills any any filmmaker has to to develop is problem solving. I think if you if you can be a problem solver first and foremost, um, you can make any kind of film work. Um, so it's yeah, I, I'd say the biggest challenge is um, is just working with things that will happen along the way and, and finding ways to to um, to. Solve. Nice. Um, yeah. All right. Okay, cool. Let me put in the next question. The next question is from Sammy from Toronto. So, um, hey, Sammy. <laughs> she's asking, how do you decide whose story to tell? That's a good question. Um, that's a great question. I think the, the most important thing about anything uh, you do in filmmaking is do something, work with something that uh, really interests you because you're going to put in a ton of effort and give up a, a ton of time. So you've got to do something uh, that really interests you. And it's it's got to be someone that you kind of, like for me, doing a Stories of Bike episode, it's got to be someone that that um, I connect with, that uh, who has a story that resonates with me. Um, and then, uh, you know, something in the story that, that also goes beyond just kind of recounting um, something that happened. It's, you know, you know I want to learn something from, from listening to their story. Mm -hmm. And so um, yeah, it's really about um, finding a story that, that um, connects with you so that, that you, you're invested with it as well. So yeah, every one of my stories, uh, there's something in there that, that kind of just you know piques my interest and um, that and that I kind of want to know more about and um, learn more about as well. So um, 
yeah, it's just just kind of really find that personal interest to to pursue and and um, you know chase down the rabbit hole. Nice, nice. So um, my question is: uh, Are you working alone, or you have a team? How you produce uh, your uh, videos? Uh, I, I do a bit of both, um, depending on uh, if it's a story or book episode. Most most of the time, I will work on my own. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, I kind of have someone there for a day or two um who's just kind of e either in the area and curious about filmmaking who wants to come along and help out <laughs> but most of the time on stories of bike it's just myself so, so i'll kind of do the pre the the research and pre-production and then the shoot and then the editing i sort of do that on my own but for um mission pieces um whether it be from the state government or oil enfield or distinguished gentleman's ride um i'll have a an, an assistant with me um yeah. at, at the very least so there's this guy hayden who um i work with a lot that's hayden there um he uh, he's a great cinematographer himself and a filmmaker himself and um awesome awesome uh drone pilot as well so he's a fully accredited drone pilot so he, he's he's able to come along to um those shoots with me for um, the big, uh, big um, productions that I'll do on Road to Ride that you see here, um, and um, some of the Royal Enfield shoots, I've also got a, a good mate of mine, Andrew Jones, who used to run Pipeman, uh, and his wife would would help out. So Andrew is great; um, he's a creative director himself. So he's been really great to um, just talk to and uh, explore ideas and kind of flesh out the the shoot schedule and, and just kind of you know develop ideas for for the shoot and um, find unique angles to kind of work with so uh, yeah so the the kind of the on ground team is um is probably usually no bigger than than three or four uh in terms of the crew mm -hmm. uh, and then, um Pre-production, uh, Andrew and his wife Anne uh, uh, will kind of work together and and put in together uh, uh, run sheets and uh, research and getting permits and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. which which I hate putting together. <laughs> so <laughs> Anne, Anne and Andrew are great at doing that stuff. Um, but yeah, so for a lot of the distinguished gentlemen's ride um, videos, um, I will usually just do those on on my own. Uh, and because they're they're sort of more um, intimate stories, um, um, it, it sort of helps just to kind of keep it one on one. Yeah, yeah, okay, I understand. So, um, story stories of bike is one project, but I think you're currently working on a new project that calls Crossroads. Can you give a little bit yes. insight about this? Yeah. Um, so Crossroads, <coughs> excuse me, it's my morning voice. Um, so Crossroads is a, um, a TV show I've been sort of developing for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. <coughs> it's, um, excuse me, <coughs> okay. the concept of Crossroads is to kind of showcase the, the best riding roads in the world, but presented by the locals who ride them. So there's no kind of sort of one host that's, touring around and riding all these times these roads and and talking i kind of wanted to avoid that just because i've you know i found that um doing these sort of one-on-one -on -one stories you can um bring out a lot of character and and a lot of local knowledge about um about these roads so crossroads is is about um sort of combining elements of stories of bike but also sort of world travel um, through the eyes of the local, the locals that ride ride these amazing roads, and sort of sharing their local knowledge, as well as their um, their the sort of personal histories along the way, um, and then each episode will kind of combine three different roads and three stories, and then and then um, link them together in, uh, in sort of unexpected ways. Uh, but yeah, it, it's really Crossroads is kind of also about. Um, exploring how kind of connected we all really are, more than we realize. And mm -hmm. 
using roads as a bit of a kind of a metaphor for that. But um, yeah, just through stories of the bike, I kind of learned that, you know, no matter where you are in the world, we all kind of have these sort of similar challenges in our daily lives and, uh, and similar stories uh, through our life experiences. And that, um, yeah, and that's quite important that, um, you know, despite where you live or, you know, mm. what uh, culture you're from, um, yeah, there's, we have a lot more similarities than we realize. Yeah. Uh, are you finished the project? Did you wrap it up already? Uh, right. Are you still producing? When can we see Crossroads? And where? Um, yeah, so we're, st we're still in pre-production. And um, uh, thank oh, sorry, I just saw a comment. Thanks, Megan. <laughs> uh, uh, we're still in pre-production. So um, the whole COVID-19 virus thing has actually been... I, uh, a bit of a relief because we've been busy in casting. I've been sort of trying to balance my day-to-day -day work with, with time on Crossroads. And uh, the more I've been getting into cross Crossroads in doing um, all the pre-production and casting, mm -hmm. the more I've realised just how big of a beast it really is. And it kind of really does require a lot more time than I've been giving it. So, um, so we've been... And fundraising, we, we tried going through the the whole sponsorship route to to uh, work with the manufacturers to to get input, um, and, and yeah, we sort of toured all around the world. We we submit with BMW in Germany and Royal Enfield in India and Yamaha in the US. We presented to to all these guys, and they all loved it, mm -hmm. and I thought it was amazing, and it would do wonders for the motorcycle industry as a whole. Um, particularly in in um, uh, in sort of fostering a new generation of riders, which they're kind of struggling with, um, and they're all kind of prepared to uh, to invest. But um, the closer we got to to the crunch time, I said, "Right, we're going to do this." <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh sorry. Set to her. But you're still yeah. moving, right? You're still. Oh, you're still moving. So, so we we do have um we do have a limited amount of funds that we're going to be using to, uh, to produce a pilot. Um, so we're going to work towards that. Uh, produce a pilot. Uh, three episodes that we're sort of in the middle of casting for. Um, and as I said, we're, we're just using this time with uh, all the lockdown at the moment to, to get into casting and, and um, really sort of do some great pre-production research so that when we're free to, to move around and travel again, um, that we can just really hit the ground running. Yeah. Um, I saw like a few weeks ago that you um, were um, trying to get more people for, for to cast. Um, yes. Do you have now enough people or you need more people? Oh, still looking for more people. So um, we've 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 had um, we've had hundreds of entries, uh, hundreds of submissions, and the submission process isn't easy. So yeah, it's um, it's a, a fairly sort of detailed process to kind of get down the the information. Um, so there's there's some great stories coming through, but um, what we're looking for is is finding the right stories to. <clears throat> to kind of connect to one another. So the more stories we have, the um, the better we can kind of find those connections and, and diversity of roads and and, um, and and countries to to work in. So um, yeah. So anyone watching, if you have a, a, a beautiful ride um, and want to share your story of where you ride, by all means, go to crossroads show uh, to submit your story. Nice. Nice. Okay, cool. Cam, I would like to wrap this up. Can you tell us where we can get more information about stories of bike, crossroads, where can people reach you? Yeah, so um, uh, stories of bike you can watch on my YouTube channel, which is just um, to search for stories of bike on there. Uh, there's a website which I've been really slack in updating as well, which is just storiesofbike.com. Uh, you can form find more about the Crossroads TV show at crossroads.show. Um, what else is there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry.
Thank you. Awesome. Cam, thank you so much for joining. I know it's very early right now. Uh, thanks so much, no. Cam. Right? Thank you very much to, uh, for, for joining and uh, doing this. And I'm ready. Great. Thank you all the best with Crossroads. And you're getting your funding and uh, then you're getting, you're getting everything uh, out there. Awesome. Thanks, JP. This has been awesome. Thank you, Cam. Take care, man. Thank you very much. See you guys. Bye.